Republican Congressman Tim Burchett of Tennessee. Uh, Congressman, we've got a lot of ground to cover. Thanks so much uh, for being with us. Let me ask you this, uh, starting on the impeachment inquiry. As you know, one of your Republican colleagues in the House, Ken Buck, is making some headlines for uh, condemning uh, the Republican impeachment effort against President Biden. He says the GOP is relying on what he calls an imagined history. What do you think? Do you agree? Ken's a uh, former prosecutor. He's an honorable guy and he's a dear friend. As a matter of fact, we were sitting side by side on January 6th when all that went down. So I would, um, he, he's, uh, I listen to what he says. He, he doesn't speak often, but when he does, he does it with, um, with a great deal of, uh, of, of class and, uh, and, and intellect. So I, I take everything he says seriously, Jim, honestly, I, I wouldn't brush it off because he makes some valid points. He's, he's stated, how does that tie? You know, it was when he was vice president, all this criminal activity, how does that, uh, you know, forward into being president? And there's a gap there. And so I think that's what, um, you know, honestly, I think that's what part of the inquiry. I'm not an attorney, but I think that's what the inquiry uh, will do. We'll allow that for more of that activity. Well, I just yeah, I just wish there's, we could there isn't get any get evidence of any faster. criminal activity during that time when he was vice president that's been put forward. But I mean, just to jump in there and ask you specifically, do you think it's a good idea to launch this impeachment inquiry or do you have some reservations about it? Oh, I don't have any reservations about it. It's an inquiry. It's not an impeachment. And if you think we're going to get the votes to do it, uh, it is 60 votes in the Senate, even if we get it in the House, uh, the impeachment, I think it's a it's a pipe dream. But I believe the base is is, demand, is not requesting it. You know, Dad Gummit, they're demanding it everywhere I go. Somebody will say something about it and say we need to get on with it. You know, as I've stated, uh, Speaker, so it's McCarthy being done for political Trump reasons. Program, no, no, I think it's being done because people are, you know, we live in a democracy to say why anything in Washington is political. You know, you, you the, what, the soft drink you drink in the committee room, it's political. The, you know, we have Chick-fil-A for lunch. It's political. Um, uh, not a lot of tofu on the Republican side at luncheons. So, you know, everything we do down there is political. It's a political town. We're political op officers. Um, so in a sense it is, but, but it's just we're doing our duty is what we're asked to do. But I, you're old enough to remember, just as I am, that when uh, House Republicans impeached President Clinton back in the late 90s, that wasn't exactly good for the Republican Party back then. Came at a cost for the GOP and helped Bill Clinton's approval numbers. Might this backfire on House Republicans and help President Biden? It might. And that's why I've encouraged us to move ahead with the budget situation. We're $32 trillion in debt. The conservative proposals out there are spending, you know, we're going to, uh, I'll estimate show we're going to take in around $5 trillion and we're going to spend around $7 trillion. Now, where is that conservative any shape, form, or fashion? I think I think we need to, um, as has been stated, walk in, chew gum at the same time. We've got separate committees. I think Jody Arrington is a very capable chairman of the budget committee. I wished I was still on the budget committee because, uh, you know, in 30 years or so, we haven't passed a budget in, in Congress, and I would like to see his committee move forward with a budget that would, in fact, balance our budget in a reasonable amount of time. And I think they can do that. I think that's one of the concerns, and it's a, it's a valid concern, is that we just stay focused on one issue. But I think if, if we're allowed to play this out, I think that the other committees will go ahead with their job and, and, and move ahead with that, because that, that's what's going to sink this country. You know, uh, the, the conservatives all warn, you know, one hand they're saying we need to kick Joe Biden out of office. And I said, do you want Kamala Harris as your president? And they, oh, no, no. And I said, well, that's what's going to happen. So I said, you better you better have you a plan. And I, that's why I've stated we need to move ahead with some budget talks. Some Because that's, I believe, down deep, that is what well, why the Republicans have a majority. We know we're out of control spending and we've got to get control of it. But to do that, do you think there's going to be a government shutdown? Possibly, possibly. Um, I saw the Would number you that, that? The, the the bean cap. Well, if it if if we don't have a balance, if we're not if we're not reducing the amount of money we're spending, I would support it because we're in a situation. You know, they're saying it could cost us three billion dollars to shut down. Well, let's put that in perspective. We sent basically 114 billion unchecked dollars to Ukraine. We spend. Uh, you know, uh, I think the, the conservatives and, and, and frankly, some of the moderates are concerned about the border situation, the fentanyl. I mean, you know, you've seen the numbers. It, it's ridiculous. And there's no other reason to do that other than to say we've made a mistake at the border. And that mistake is multi-presidential 
and it continues on into the Biden administration and, 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 and exponentially. So I think there's a lot of things tied into that. Congressman, let me ask you about former President Trump. I'm sure you saw earlier today he was on Meet the Press. He was speaking out on his attempts to overturn uh, his loss in the 2020 election. And he says uh, pushing uh, his unsubstantiated claims of election fraud, that the election was rigged, which, of course, is not true, was his idea. Let's listen to that. You called some of your outside lawyers. You said they had crazy theories. Why were you listening to them? Were you listening to them because they were telling you what you wanted to hear? You know who I listened to myself? I saw what happened. I watched that election, and I thought the election was over at 10 o'clock in the evening. Were you calling the shots, though, Mr. President, ultimately? Uh, as to whether or not I believed it was rigged? Oh, sure. I, okay. I, it was my decision. Yeah, Congressman, he seems to be admitting that it was his decision to try to overturn the 2020 election. Is that a good idea for him to go on Meet the Press and acknowledge that sort of thing when... Uh, he's under investigation by the special counsel. Well, I'd need to go back and watch. I, I don't watch Meet the Press, so I wouldn't know what exactly what he said. I wouldn't know if that was a cut up clip or not. But I suspect what he's saying was he does not believe that 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 he lost that election. And in his heart, he doesn't believe he lost that election. And a lot of folks do and a lot of the base do. I just all I can tell you is. Isn't that a little Tennessee, silly, though, for him to election. continue to say Trayton. that? Well, our Secretary of State, Trey Hargett, runs a clean election in Tennessee, and, and we've had I've seen very few complaints, and that's really all I ever comment on Tennessee. But, yeah, I think we Your need to get on Your election wasn't rigged, it. was Let's it? Let's get on with you won. talking. No, no, I won overwhelmingly, so I'd hope it, I sure hope it was, and I was, I'm usually the most underfunded candidate out there, <laughs> so I'm doing something right, I guess, but... No, well, I guess you get um, what I'm saying, right? Definitely wasn't. I, I don't know. I, I guess I, it, I do. it boggles the mind a little bit why like the president, former else. president continues to say that. All of your colleagues in the House, you're not saying your elections were rigged. And yet Trump continues to say the election was rigged. Why doesn't somebody tell him to knock that off? Nobody, nobody believes that except him. Well, he, well, he, well he's Trump. I mean, you, you, nobody told George Bush, either Bush, what, what to do. And I suspect nobody told President Obama what to do. Ultimately, they... They have big egos and they do what they're going to do and they're going to say what they want to say. And that's that's the problem with leadership. That's the one problem I do not have. I've got people around me all the time that tell me what I don't do right um, in my household. I get that quite a bit. And I'm and I'm generally wrong when they tell me that. So I but, you know, I'm not president of the United States. He's also blaming the House Speaker for what took place on January 6th. Uh, let's listen to a bit of that. I want to know. Who you By the way, on that day, Nancy Pelosi. I, I, I don't have. I, why would day. I tell you that? Listen, Nancy Pelosi was in charge of security. She turned down ten thousand soldiers. If she didn't turn down the soldiers, you wouldn't have had January sixth. Did you call military or law enforcement? What? Did you call military or law enforcement at the moment the Capitol was under attack? I'm not going to tell attack? you anything. I told. Okay. I, let me put it this way. I behaved so well. I did such a good job. Congressman, isn't it isn't it true that it's Donald Trump's fault that January 6th happened? Had he just accepted the results of the election, there never would have been a January 6th. Why did why continue to blame uh, the speaker at the time, Nancy Pelosi? It doesn't make any sense. Well, I, Dan Bishop and I, he was newly elected a special election. I were walking up the steps of the Capitol running a little late and there was one one Capitol Hill policeman there on the gates. Um, and they had all the fencing up and everything, and they made us to go around and go through the um, go through the the tunnel. And I said to Bishop, I said, "That's, that's kind of odd, you know. They usually they have more people here when they have a a, a veterans or a biker rally or a right to life rally. Um, I think there was a complete failure all the way around that that they, they did not see it. Speaker Pelosi was doing a a documentary with her daughter that covered all of her activity. Frankly, Jim, I would love to come on and 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 and." I tried to talk to the January 6th commission about about what I saw on January 6th. I was the last House member to leave the House floor, literally. And I could not, and I, I saw somebody filming in the tunnel, and I couldn't get them to call me back. I've called them twice. And then finally I went and viewed the camera, uh, had to go. Uh, Rodney Davis took me in, and we viewed the cameras ourselves, the film. Yeah. So I think there was a lot at fault there. A lot of people were at fault. But none of that and, would have um, happened. But and, none of that would have happened if, if Trump had I just it, accepted that he lost the election. If Trump had, if, well, if he had just if accepted Trump had that he lost the election, on, like your Democratic opponent in Tennessee when you on, won re-election, sure. that person they said, you know what, Tim Burchett won the election. 
I'm going to go on, on my way and, and move on with my life. Donald Trump didn't do that. Well, I'm he kept still lying about it being I'm rigged. I'm still waiting on and their call. OK, well, yeah, let's I, put I'm that to the side. For, but you understand but, yeah, my if, point. If, listen, if, if, if President if President Trump had gone on the news and said, y'all cool it, it would have stopped. You're right there. Absolutely. One hundred percent. It put people's lives at risk. And I thought it would have been a great opportunity for him to make press. But he didn't. Nobody else did either. And uh, and, and just it just went on and it went and it, and it went from bad to worse. Well, Congressman, we appreciate your time very much. I, I do want to get into uh, the UAP uh, investigation that you're doing up on the Hill. We're going to get you back, come back another time and we'll talk about that as well. But uh, thanks as always. Always good to talk to you. Appreciate it. Jim, it's always a pleasure. I look forward to your special on, on regular folks tonight. And thanks for looking after those dogs. I've got three rescues and I'm a rescue and we got three dogs, four cats and a couple of horses. So I appreciate yeah. anything that you do Absolutely. on those grounds. It's the best decision I ever made. Well, Thank one you, of the brother. best. I shouldn't say the best, but one of the best. All right. Thanks, Congressman. Yeah, well, Appreciate it. Sure.